Well, when we talk about measurements in our curriculum here, the very first class we take, that is a basic laboratory experience class, we immediately tell our students that the most important thing they're going to learn how to do is to make measurements because we're using the measurements to make reagents. So we talk about measurements like volumetric and mass and how important it is to be able to do accurate measurements so that the reagents they make are of the highest quality. They are the best they can do. No matter how crazy good your lab skills are, if you start out with a bad reagent, your results will always be bad. So the most important thing is get the reagent right first and then everything else will fall into place. Well, in the healthcare world, uh, measurements is, is literally a life and death type of experience. And, you know, we, everything from, we take care of folks from, you know, even before they're born, uh, the pregnant woman, all the way through the end of life care. And all through that, you know, measurements um, are something that all healthcare professionals are going to have to be um, aware of, and not just aware of, but be very able to do very precise calculations. Um, because it has to do with giving medications, it has to do with giving treatments, it has to do with giving oxygen therapy, uh, it has to do with just some basic things like height and weight, blood pressure measurements, things that we're all familiar with if we've ever been to a healthcare uh, provider's office before. Um, but, but, but the world of measurement um, is, is just a, a universe we live in and breathe in every day in health technologies. Well, it's important for anyone to learn about measurement that if you think about just in daily life, you go to the gas station and you're buying in the price, you're given a price per gallon. Uh, you go to the grocery store, you're looking at nutritional information and they tell you the number of servings and the for instance, sodium content per serving or the fat per serving. And so any of this deals with measurements. Now, specifically for science students, that science is very quantitative, that you're dealing with numbers throughout the entire duration of whatever you're doing in science. And it's part of the communication that if, in terms of measurements, not only is the value important and the units important, but how you actually got those values. What tools did you use and so on. It, it makes for easier communication if we have this sort of universal base language that we can all rely on. Well, in, in our department, the biotechnology department, our students are trying to train to, um, many of them to get jobs right out of the two-year program. and so. A lot of the things they might be expected to do in a laboratory deals with measurements. So knowing how to use the balances, knowing how to measure volume, um, knowing how to do significant figures, uh, and understanding the quality of your measurements all goes into that. Well, basically it comes down to not having to repeat experiments often. Um, if you're in a, in a situation where it's a medical situation, it could also be something that uh, could, uh, the health of somebody could depend on. So, you know, it, it all depends on what kind of work you're doing. But. Well, I, I think it's important to remember when you think about health care, you think about um, oxygen therapy every time you see something on TV and somebody's really sick, how do they mimic it? They mimic it by putting a little nasal cannula on their nose and oh my gosh, the patient's really sick. It's, it's commonplace now. When you go into the hospital, everybody receives oxygen. But what people don't remember is that oxygen is a drug. And like any other drug, it does have side effects. And so particularly, you know, not only with adults, particularly with babies, which is my specialty, um, there can be dramatic side effects from too much or too little oxygen. So obviously if there's too little oxygen, we'll give them oxygen. We also don't want to give them too much oxygen. Um, various types of lung disease um, problems all throughout the body can be affected by too much oxygen. I've documented this. This is a tried and true um, thing over time. It's well documented. Well, routinely we will do volumetric measurements. 
we do uh, mass measurements, okay? But we also are doing a lot of things where we're reading and ana analyzing using machines. And so we're doing a lot of measurements with very, very small volumes. Between the working with our DNAs, working with our initial protein concentrations, we're looking into microliters and micrograms. And so we have to learn how to use the metric system way down at the, uh, some of the lowest uh, values. Well, routinely in the healthcare field, we deal a lot with um, medications. And when you deal with medications, you're usually dealing with um, some sort of syringe. Um, and knowing how to calibrate and draw up accurately medications in a syringe. Um, also, it'll be fluids. The different types of fluids we have come in liter bags, or this one is a 250 milliliters, or a fourth of a liter bag. Um, and so, but there's also weight and height, uh, particularly when we're weighing our premature newborns. That's all done in gram weight, uh, not in uh, pounds and ounces like a newborn comes into the world and it's eight pounds 12 ounces with our little premature um, uh, babies we have to measure them because they're so small in gram weight and so it it's just across the board you know it's it's every way that you can do a measurement on um, a human system uh, or a human chemistry level even um, deciliters, millimeters, those sort of things go into calculation of when we're looking at blood studies and that sort of thing. Um, so it's, it's across the board of how we use these kind of conversions. Well, the, the big three that most labs will do commonly are temperature measurements, uh, mass or weight, and also volume. Um, commonly, solids are, are weighed um, and liquids are dispensed according to volume. So those are the three. Then, then there's a wide range of other measurements that are done um, depending on the situation. But those three are the big ones. Usually pH, um, weights, and uh, volume, especially small volume. That's what we basically concentrate on in our, in our labs. Well, universally, well, of course, universally means globally. Uh, that is the system that's most commonly used. It's the one that is most consistent. It's easiest to use. When you talk about um, the logic that goes into how units are determined as compared to the English system. Uh, so we know that in our world, we're going to be dealing with other scientists, and they're going to be using the same system we are. convert um, between the metric system all the time. Um, good examples are, uh, and these are ones that I really work with on students in the basic lab techniques class, is converting between milliliter and microliter. When, when a paper or some protocol tells you you need to add 0 0.5 mils and you're using a micropipette, it's just, it's just something that you need to be able to do is to be able to say how many microliters that is. Um, same with uh, weight, if you're supposed to add 250 milligrams and your scale is measuring in grams, then you need to know how to um, convert those numbers back and forth so that you can actually use the equipment um, better. Um, one of the advantages of the metric system is that it's based on a, on, on a factor of 10. So the units often have prefixes that are uh, a power of 10 or, or multiple powers of 10s. And it's very easy to go from, uh, say, a small unit to a larger unit by just multiplying by the right number of, of, of factors of 10. Um, but very frequently, we uh, need to use a larger number or a smaller number. And uh, then we have to do conversions uh, very frequently. Um, they're, they're important because if you convert in the wrong direction, you may be say, saying or reporting something is bigger than it really is or smaller than it really is. So being able to do a conversion accurately is, is uh, an important uh, skill.
I was thinking of some of the mistakes that have been dealt, that have happened because of measurement. There's, it's usually with conversion, it's not the measurement technique itself, but the conversion technique that there's the famous incident of the, uh, the probe being sent to Mars where they had the thrust was, that was calculated that needed to be figured out was done based upon one system of units and the computer was based upon a different system of units. Uh, there is a famous incident uh, with Canadian aircraft, the Gimli glider, that where they had just officially converted from one system of units to another, they calculated how much fuel they needed in one system of units and filled up based upon that, but didn't have enough jet fuel in order to make it halfway to their destination. Unfortunately, no one was hurt, that eventually the pilots were able to glide it down. Uh, it's part of that common language of just because you see a number doesn't automatically immediately mean what you think it means. And so the proper technique does two things. One, it will make it very clear what units were used, but also it makes the measurements that you're talking about uh, that much more accurate, that, that if you know how to use, for instance, a vernier caliper, then Later, if you're talking about a uh, user near caliper and it came out to be five meters long, well, that right there is indicating you don't know what you're talking about uh, because well, at least I've never seen a one that goes that far uh, for that large of a measurement. So, but if you're using a vernier caliper, uh, then everyone else, if you're using it properly, everyone else knows, okay, I've used it before, I know how it's what he's done, I know the accuracy of that, and again, it's, it's again part of the communication of the ideas. In science, especially physics, which is more my field, that the precision and accuracy of language is, is very particular, and it is just part of the common language that is basically understood all over the world. The consequences are that it goes right back to what we started out with, and that is the reagents aren't going to be any good. They are not going to be able to meet the needs that you have set forth for your experimental system. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't think I can overstate this enough. It truly can be life and death. It truly can be. I mean, in the way of giving medications, um, particularly when you talk about the most vulnerable, like our children, children dosage, you know, because it's so much predicated on their weight. Um, you're going to give an X amount of medication based on their weight. Um, if, if, my, if my order is three-tenths of a milliliter and I don't see the decimal there and I go give three milliliters, then, I, then possibly that could have devastating effects on um, uh, giving that kind of incorrect dosage. So it is, it is absolutely critical to be precise to know how to do these accurate conversions um, because truly it, 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 is, it, is, it can be life and death. Even